whatever you're doing, it's going to be a time in your life that make you want to be like, man, I'm done doing that. You get what I'm saying? I'm done want to do that. Don't don't listen to that voice. You get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, sometimes the toughest the toughest parts of people's life make that person. This is Sad Boy Radio. Ask me, can I love the same? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. I'm your host, Matt. And man, we got a very special guest in here today. He's co-signed by Future and Travis Scott. He's got he's done a lot, a lot for sure. And you got some big announcements coming later, you know. Coming straight from Englewood. Introduce yeah. yourself, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me. Fast money, yeah. You've been doing this for a minute. Uh since 2020, right? Yeah. To be exact. What got you started with all of it? Probably like when I was getting out of high school and stuff like that, I ain't really had like no plan for real, you know? Like I ain't no I I knew I wasn't gonna wanna go to college or nothing like that, you know. I ain't wanna waste nobody money trying to do that. I ain't really wanna do that. And I knew I I, I ain't really had like no like no for show for show plan. And when I was in school I used to write like poetry and stuff like that. I had uh I had I needed some like credits and stuff to graduate. So I had got into uh this little program, this I think it was young authors, some something like that. But they had to do it like poetry. And then when I was in the barbershop one day, I had met this, they, had, they was cutting this producer here. Huh? And I had did one of the poems for him. They was telling me, like, yeah, he a producer, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, I ain't, I can't, I don't rap or nothing like that. It's not like I got no rap songs, but I had this one poem I wrote for my OG. And I had said it to him. He was rocking with it. And after that, I just started getting some music. And that's where you got introduced to the Loud as a Bomb too, right? Yeah, that's what it was, Loud as a Bomb. That's what it was. So with that poetry, what do you feel like it helped you express? I really wasn't really too much into it. Like if I, if it was LeBron, if it was to be in my life later, like around this part, I'd probably be more into it. But back then, I was only doing it because I had needed credits to graduate and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't even end up getting a chance to get my diploma and all that stuff because after that, the attendance thing had came into you know, but. Back then, I wasn't really too much into it, like. But I ain't gonna say I didn't like it. I still liked it at the same time. I just wasn't that much into it, like, like how I am into rap now. I wish I had like the passion that I got now when I was doing it, cause I probably could have wrote more stuff. Like I only had one one poem. It was about my OG, and I was recycling that every event. I think we probably. It, at the end, I, I was going when it first had started, the Loud and the Bomb thing first had started. That was, like, the first year it had started up in for my school. So we didn't have too many, like, meets and stuff like that. It probably was, like, three of them. The amazing thing about it is it helped create this outlet for you. And it got me, like, comfortable with writing. You know what I'm saying? It's like I said, I had never wrote. I think I had did a song right after that when my homie had passed away and stuff like that. But that was my first, like, introduction into making my own song. You get what I'm saying? Or not even a song, just rhyming words myself. And that song was dedicated to him, right? The first song that I had did, so the, the poem that I had wrote was from my OG, was from my mama. And then when my homie had passed away, Telly, R.P. Telly, we had, uh, we had, uh, we had made a little song, me and my cousin, Free Keys, we had made a little song. So as you moved on throughout music, how do you feel like you've seen yourself progress? I progressed a lot. Like even back then, when I was when I had did, I was I sounded like Lil Bibby. <laughs> you feel me? But that's cause like I said, that was my first introduction to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like I was I was rapping like who I was listening to. When now I got like my own style. And as you continue to progress, there's been a lot of changes in your life. Changes that could have taken you away from you know, where you grew up in a good way. Why do you feel like it's been so important for you to still highlight where you've come from? You're never supposed to get where you come from. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so important to your story. You know? Like, every story started at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I always get big ups to where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Because it helped mold me. You know, my whole childhood, every, every world that I've been in, every environment, I always relate back on that. I mean, go go back on that in every song. 
probably not every song, but in a lot of my music. In what ways have you seen it help shape you? Your neighborhood. It helped you know how, how, how life is, how life really is. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially like in Chicago, you feel me? It's, I don't I don't believe in that growing up too fast thing, you get what I'm saying? Because you go through everything how you're supposed to go through it. I'm glad I've been through a lot of stuff that I went through. So that way, when it when, when, when similar stuff came later on in the future, I knew how to handle it, you get what I'm saying? And then there's still stuff that I ain't go through that I, that I still got to go through, you get what I'm saying? So I can know how to handle it if it was supposed to present itself again. What do you feel like is the toughest thing that you've had to battle through? Probably st- trying to like stay out of trouble and not to get sidetracked and stuff like that, you know? Because still being in Chicago and stuff like that, you can get sidetracked a lot, you know? But it's it's on you to know what the real, what the goal is and what the end goal is, you know? At any point, you can lose it all. You get know what I'm saying? It, I think Wallow and, and, and uh, Gilly, Wallow and Gilly, Wallow and Gilly talk about it a, a lot. Like, Wallow was saying it took three minutes, but three minutes changed his whole life, three or four minutes, something like that. Like, at any point, your whole life could change if you made the wrong bad decision. You get know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's the biggest challenge that I've been, you feel me, trying to stay on path, make sure I go about life the right way, you know? It's a good mindset to adopt as you continue to move toward, throughout life, right? That I, it's it's like that one Big Sean song. Um, I forgot what song it is, but he talks about it. He's like, my mom said it takes ten minutes to fuck up your Wikipedia, because it's it's one mistake you make, and then everything's a wrap. <laughs> you know, it's a funny story I heard, and it was from one of your interviews that you talk about is how you borrowed, is that you went to play dice, you went to shoot dice, hey. lost all the money. Got some money and then want it all back the next day. Nah, yeah, for sure. That was around my B-Day. That was around my B-Day. That was probably was like the end of May or beginning of June. And Guap had called me. Because I was, I, I think I think it was like a lot of stuff going on in L.A. Shout out DCG. They was in L.A. and stuff like that, you know. And I uh, I had, I ain't ever had been. This probably had to be like 2021, 2022. And I was saving up my bread and stuff, you know. So I'm like, man, I want to go out there to L.A. I want to see what's, what's going on out there, you know? Because around this time, especially early on, like, rap was my first time ever going out of town. You know what I'm saying? Like, besides Detroit, because I got family in Detroit, but I ain't, I had never been out of town before rap. Like, I've never been on the plane ever in my life until I started rapping. And I think I only had been to Atlanta around this time, so I wanted to go to L.A. And... I had went to go shoot. I don't know why, but for some reason, I used to go outside with all my money. Like, I and that's because we used to grow up looking up to the dope boys. And you get what I'm saying? Like, me and my homie, Scooty, free Scooty, but we used to grow up and always walk around with every last dollar we had to our pocket, make our pockets a little bit, you know? So I probably had like, like four, five thousand on me in my pocket. Boom, right? Now I all that money came from dice. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I right, bet y'all trying to make a D game, bet let's do it. You know, get the shooting dice in probably three hours. That five thousand dollars turned to a hundred dollars in three hours. I promise you, kids, you're not probably shorter than that. Man, I was so hurt. I called go out like, man, I ain't even trying to go to LA no more, bro. I don't even get it. Boom, I end up uh hitting hitting uh shout out Bleak. That was uh that's an older guy on our block. He uh he always look out for me whenever I, you know, shout out Bleak. He had loaned me some bread. My granddad loaned me some bread. I went to go shoot dice with their money. And up getting getting up on some money. I bought a car, all type of stuff. I ain't go to LA, but I end up buying a car, some more stuff. So you you didn't even end up going on the trip? Nah, I, I ain't gonna lie, I was I was blue. I ain't even wanna do the LA stuff no more. You feel me? At the end when I had end up getting that money, I'm like, and I still don't wanna go to I'm still blue. I lost all you guys cause that messed up the whole thing. Like the whole plan, I don't even know why I went to the block that day. I was supposed to stay in the crib, pack all type of stuff. I I was like, man, but I ended up buying a charger and some more stuff. So I I was like, all right, bet it's, it is. But then with dice, that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? It's again, I was mad, but at the same time, like I said, I wanted shooting dice. You know what I'm saying? And back then, my life was dice. You know, like if, if you, you can win one day, you can lose one day, you can win. You know what I'm saying? It's a gamble. I wasn't really tripping. I was more so mad that it was my B day. 
If it was a regular day, I I talk it up. That's another thing that you talk about, right? Is that some people they start to get rowdy because they don't under they're young. That's why I don't really shoot dice with young people, you know? Cause I think that they think that that dice is like something that you I don't know what people think, but I understand what dice is. You know, you win, you lose. You get what I'm saying? I know, and everybody who been around me know my hands hot in the be- in the beginning of the game. You know, so like the first hour or so, I'm striking you. You get what I'm saying? And I also know that after that hour up, I start losing. You get what I'm saying? And it be on me or whether or not I want to stay in the game or not. But everybody will tell you. I get real hot at the beginning and I start losing at the end. Then I might pick it back up at the end. You never know. Other people, they go and leave out the house with money that they really, 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 really need. You get what I'm saying? And then they get mad when they lose it. Now they call and they homie, man, pull up, blah, blah, we finna, you know, blah. That's why I don't really, I ain't never been in no incident like that, but I heard a lot of stories like that. You get what I'm saying? I always grew up shooting dice with older people. And of course, it'd be younger people there, but older people was there to, Mediating and you feel me as they ain't nobody gonna act a fool when 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 they there. You get what I'm saying? So I be cool when I be shooting dice, but I be hearing a lot of stories. People be getting mad, losing, having their homie come rob dice game, all type of stuff. So you mentioned that dice used to be a really big part of your life. Oh yeah, for sure. What forced everything to change? It was just something that I was doing myself. You get what I'm saying? Like sad hustle, cause I ain't want I ain't want no job. You get what I'm saying? Growing up, I used to work at Heroes and stuff like that, but I wouldn't really call it. Working because my granddad owned it. You get what I'm saying? Then he had passed away when I was 13. And after 13, I don't, I wasn't even supposed to be that young working. You get what I'm saying? Like I was like 11, 12 being a cashier. You get what I'm But that was everybody in my family first job. You get what I'm saying? Only job for real. Shout out well, my great granddad. He passed away, but he put us in a position where we can make money at a very young age. You get what I'm saying? Off the, off the books, you know? But when he had passed away, I was like, dang, I, I didn't, I didn't, I'm paying my own phone bill at 13. I'm buying my own clothes, buying my own shoes. So I'm like, I got to figure out how I'm going to keep this little bread, you know? Start shooting dice. I was a little confused about that when I heard the story, right? Yeah. Your granddad, he started working at Harold's. No, great granddad. Great granddad started working at Harold's. Nah, so he, I don't really know how the story began, but I'm for sure he didn't work at Harold's. He uh he from Mississippi, I, I believe. And he had locked in with the guy who owned Heroes. And they were so close that when dude had got his first Heroes, I guess he had made he had my they I guess they had went in on it with each other or I don't know how to say it, but he never worked for the guy. You mentioned in another interview that you guys lost all of those all the uh what's it called? All the stake in the Heralds once he passed. Not even just stake, but we had lost them all when he had passed away, you know. Uh, two of them we had still had because my uncles had got they bred up and had got it from them, you know, had bought them from them and stuff like that. But all the ones that my granddad still owned, we had lost them, you know. But we still got the one on 87 and same one. Uh, shout out my cousin. Her, her father just passed away, but uh, her, her father was the one that owned it. And when he had passed away, she had... Got up and put her big girl pants up, pants on, and now she on, she she running, you know. Well, shout out to you guys, cause that's some that's some Chicago history right there, man. How do you feel like it impacted, you know, the dynamic of what was going on financially for the family once you know he passed? Because he provided you all with jobs, your first jobs, just like you're saying, right at 13 years old. With that, I don't want people to think like we was rich. You know what I'm saying? Cause my Rest up to my great granddad, but he ain't he wasn't just going around giving people no money and no stuff like that. Instead he put you in position and get your own job and stuff like that, you know. And my OG managed one, my auntie managed one and stuff like that, you know, but we won we weren't rich. <laughs> so it wasn't you feel me, we still had to, you know. But he still put us in a position where we ain't have to go and apply for no other job. You get what I'm saying? So it wasn't like he was giving us money or we stayed in big houses or nothing like that. You know, my auntie stayed on 6 6 Polina her whole life. You know, I mean, not her whole life, but almost my whole life, you know? So it wasn't like we just, you know? But he put us in a position where we can make our own money until I had turned like 13 and he had passed away. It shows just how big of an impact he was making in your guys' lives, whether that be, you know, helping you guys 
get set on that on that trend or even just helping you out in general as grandparents do, right? You know, my grandmas, you know, when they were here, that's all they were there for. They were there to make sure we were on the right path, make sure that we needed, we got the advice we needed and shit, a home-cooked meal every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. But let's take it back to the neighborhood a little bit. And before a record deal, you say the streets was hard shit we was trained to kill. Everybody can't be hustlers. You need a skill. How did you see that mindset that, you know, was instilled in you growing up impact you as you got older? You basically need a hustle to get through it. You get what I'm saying? It's like, to get back, you got to have some type of money going on, you know? So whether you was selling some or robbing a motherfucker or getting paid to do this or, you get what I'm saying, or shooting dice or whatever, you get what I'm saying? You had to fan your, fan whatever you was good at, your strength, you get what I'm saying? And, uh... Me and my homies, we all we all was able to find what we was good at, at like when we was teenagers. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like, every, everybody, you need a skill. You know what I'm saying? Like you need some. You can't because sometimes you got you got this person who probably good at at like selling stuff or whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? And then night one day he just turned and wanna shoot at somebody. You know what I'm, like you if you can't you can't. You can't change the order of how your neighborhood is supposed to work. You get know what I'm saying? Because now, if you to get money, dude, and you just got booked for, for a temp or or a B, now who, the street's dry now because you was the get money guy. You get know what I'm saying? You was supposed to play your role, you know? So basically, I just meant like everybody's supposed to play their role, what they good at. How did that mentality help you as you continued in this career? Me being a hustler, I always... Just trying to find a way to make some bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, trying to find a way to make sure I'm straight, my people straight. You feel me? As I got older, I, it, it it turned from more than just making me, making sure I was straight, but making sure my mama straight, grandma, auntie, little brother, my homies who book, my homies who dad, kid, all this type of, you know what I'm saying? My, my, uh, my, my role got bigger as I got older, so... And and as I got father alone in my career too, you get what I'm saying. So basically, just trying to find a hustle every day, like trying to find some type of way to make some type of money. You get what I'm saying. Do you feel like it created a pressure for you that you need to be successful? Yeah, I do feel like it, it but I'm not mad at it though, because anything that that make you want to go harder is the good thing. You get what I'm saying. I mean, of course, I'm still young, so the pressure was a lot at sometimes. You get what I'm saying. It still is a lot at sometimes. But at the same time, that pressure make me want to go harder and harder. So how do you find yourself coping with that? Making sure that you don't, you know, almost crash out from that pressure. It's real important to not get too overwhelmed. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you do got to turn your phone off and and, and, and get your head straight. Because sometimes that can't. You, know you got six homies from jail calling. They need this. They need that. You got uh people 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 who passed away. They They... They like girlfriends hitting you like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? You got cousins who need stuff handled. You got girl, you know, you just got a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes it can get overwhelmed. So sometimes I turn my phone off, try to get my mental straight. I'll probably go in the studio, not even make no music, just listen to music, just put my head in the right space. And especially when that all lands on you. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're playing this role of the person that you're the breadwinner. You make sure that people are straight, and if that fails, hopefully it doesn't, right? Because I want you to succeed. If that were to fail, then you see all these other people suffer as well. That's why you got to preach to, like, all your homies to try to uh, get some money. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't always be on offense all the time. You know what I'm saying? People in the streets know what I mean by offense. You can't always be on offense all the time. Sometimes you got to play defense and stack. You get what I'm saying? Cause then it's gonna get to those points where you gotta you 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 gonna be in a position where you gotta be able to fend for yourself. Cause sometimes people might make the wrong decision in the bread when it might end up going to jail. And you can't be dry because the bread went in jail. You still gotta have your own type of motion going on. You feel me? So I try to preach to all my homies like, I mean, do what you do, but still try to get you some money. You get what I'm saying? Cause at any time, at any point, some can try to stir us off 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 track. 
You know what I'm saying? So we got to be ready for everything. Everything, literally. I mean, just like you said at your latest music video shoot, cops pulled up, locked locked a lot of people up, right? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. What happened in that situation? What was, what was going on? Man, I, I, can't even, I can't even tell you if I knew, bro. We, we got pulled up. Everything was cool for one minute. I pulled off, went to the T-shirt store. Pulled back up, went to the end of the block. We was outside the car for probably two minutes. Police pulled up. Probably like 10 police cars pulled up, started booking people, you know? But that's that's what I mean. Like, at any point, some can, you know what I'm saying? And we we wouldn't need no offense. We was on defense. We was chilling. We was making a video, you know what I'm saying? But that's why I said, like, at any point in time, some can steer you off track. You know, and that was a big loss for me and for them. Like, a couple of my homies who just got booked, they was just not getting out of jail. You know what I'm saying? They had just did months and months and months booked. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was a real, real big loss, you know. But they, I talked to them, yeah, they, they tell me stay focused. You get what I'm saying? Because the show must go on. The show still got to go on. You get what I'm saying? I just got to make it to a... When they get when they get back out this time, we 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 not in a position where we gotta move the way we was moving in order for stuff like that to happen. Where do you feel like that places you mentally though? You know, being witness to that because I'm sure it's not the first time that it's happened either. You familiar with my neighborhood? You know, police be over there like crazy, like they trying to catch them a vacation. You know, they trying to turn something in and get some days vacay pay whatever they get for whatever they do and i it's been a lot of a lot of times where we didn't have to run throw stuff had stuff or me personally i ain't speaking for nobody else but me i didn't it's been a lot of times i had to do that you get what i'm saying so man it'd be crazy but at the same time i don't know why i don't know what because then people like ask you the question, like, so why you keep going over there? You get what I'm saying? And I honestly don't know. Like, I, I have no idea. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if it's because I'm so accustomed to it. Like, like I mean, yeah, police, but at the same time, that's like my neighborhood. You get what I'm saying? I've been over there since I was six years old. You know, probably before then. I know my first school that I ever went to was over there. Luke O'Toole. I, you get what I'm saying? Like, I... So it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's like waking up in the morning and you know exactly where you at, what's right there, what's going, what time police going to be, or what, you get what I'm saying? Like, so I don't know. Or it might be I just like showing my face so people won't know that I'm too far gone, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember when I was growing up, we didn't have no person in my position that, that like can take you to go meet your favorite rapper or can put this in a position for you to make some money or or can take us from right here and take us to the studio and we could just chill and vibe it instead of just sitting on the block and stuff like that. So I think it's probably, um, I think I'll go over there probably make sure I'm still, like, make sure people know I'm still around, or you know, or I'll probably go over there to, because it's, Second date is home or what it is. It's home. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. You know, I can't speak for you, but when I think of home, it's safety. It It's familiar. Yeah, that's, that, it's familiar. You know what I'm saying? But I still understand when people might be like, all right, but if, if all this go on all the time or police still, blah, blah, why you still do it? I don't know. You know who Trinobi is? No. Nah. No? He's from out there. I don't know exactly where, but he's from Inglewood. Mm. And he was telling me that when he moved to L.A., he couldn't sleep because he was so used to the sirens at night. He was so used to all the outside noise that when he left and went anywhere where it was quiet, it made him even more paranoid and on edge and looking over his shoulder because it's not it's not what he's familiar with. I don't know about all that, but... I I I know I know uh I don't know Inglewood real big you get what I'm saying but I know for me like uh if I go out of town if I go out of town I'll be thrown I'll be like unfamiliar with my surroundings more than I'll be in my hood or like in Chicago period you get what I'm saying so that's why it'd be kind of hard to leave it alone because when I'm in Chicago 
or my neighborhood, or South Side in particular, I don't gotta use my maps for nothing. You get what I'm saying? I in other places I gotta pull out my maps or I gotta know what's over here, what who who be over there, what in South. I know exactly what game be where. I know what time our district police gonna be there, there. All right, 6 a.m., you better go on here and do everything you got to do. They ain't out there early. 8 o'clock p.m., you better go on here and sit down. Police hot, hot like a mother. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's... You get, so, I own, that's what I mean by familiar. Like, you don't think that Chicago created this extra sense of paranoia for you, though? I can't speak for no other city because I ain't, I ain't from there, you know? But for our city in particular, you got to watch your back at all times. At all, like that's that's what I would have thought he was talking about when he had said he couldn't sleep at night. Like being in a new surrounding, you don't, you don't know what's going on around you, and like the same people that that you can be not running from, but the same people that that was that you went to when in Chicago can be at whatever city that you be at. You know what I'm saying? And and when you're from Chicago, you got to deal with all that type of stuff. Like like people be trying to think like you go to the suburbs. Go out to eat and sell you a BI right, because yo yo ops be on 66 Marsfield when in reality you think they not thinking like that. Like, all right, bet let's go to the suburbs because our ops on 60 Bob. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, you can run into somebody at all times anyway. So, of course, it build up that paranoia. Like, all right, but I got to keep my head on the swivel. Like, you know, you never know what might happen when it could happen. Stuff be happening downtown, stuff be, you know what I'm saying? Places where we want not think stuff happening. So something that you mentioned right here, right, is that why do you keep going back? You said the number one rule of the streets is to leave the streets. Do you think it's only that familiarity that continues to bring you back? Or is there something else? Yeah, because like I said in the interview that you're talking, I don't own nobody anything, you know? So I and I, when I mean by leave the streets, I, I, I meant like, the hobbies and stuff that you're doing, you get what I'm saying? I don't mean leave a whole world that you're familiar with behind. You get what I'm saying? I kind of mean like the hobbies, stuff like that. But uh, on that, I didn't already did everything I had to do to, but for people that I see every day or talk to every day to respect me. You get what I'm saying? So I don't go over there looking for respect or like trying to, you know, they've been knowing me since I was six years old. They didn't see me do gangster stuff. They didn't, See me do real, real nigga stuff. They didn't see me do a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's not for a respect reason. It's really just familiar, like and and to let them know that I'm not too far away. You know what I'm saying? Because people want to know that you still around. You still a call away. You know what I'm saying? Even if they ain't asked for nothing, they want to know. Like they see me and be like, "Oh, what's up? What you what you did today?" Uh, what you do yesterday? Oh, I seen that video. It was crazy. You get what I'm saying? Like when I went out there to f- shoot shoot the finesse two times video, I came back to the hood. They all seen it. I ain't even posted. I'm trying to see how they seen it. They they seen that I was out there. And they was asking me about stuff that I ain't even post on Instagram or social media. You get what I'm saying? But that's that's what I mean. Like people still want to be involved. Like w- they see what you're doing. They want to know that they don't just got to see it on the phone. You get what I'm saying? They can see you in your face and talk. They want to be a part of it. They want it to be still tangible. They want to be able to reach out to that person that's accomplishing all these big things. But they just want to know that they can, that they still involved. You get what I'm saying? Or you ain't forget about them. You know, like, it, like you can't bring everybody with you. You get what I'm saying? So for the people that you can't bring, which was is, is is good to always go back and still have conversations with them. How long did it take you to realize that you couldn't bring everybody with you though? That some people just had to. You couldn't be the savior for everybody. Probably like my first year rapping. You get what I'm saying? Like you start to see like, and it's not even a bad, like when I, when I mean you can't take everybody with you, I don't mean like you got to lose your relationship with them. You just got to know what can damage your career. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, cause like say, say, say if I bring like the the people that's, that, that I know that, 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 that get stuff done and stuff like that, you get what I'm saying? And some something like that was supposed to happen at a concert or something like that. You get what I'm saying? They name's not gonna be in the press. You get what I'm saying? It's gonna be fast money in. Fast money in and his bob. So now everything fall on me. You get what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just a lot of different stuff that you gotta know who you bring for what. I'm, of course still has some of those people with you, but you can't bring everybody. You get what I'm saying? You can't bring everybody around because at the end of the day, whatever, whatever mess up Whatever mess up, they fall on you. And a lot of people 
in the trenches. They ain't grow up yet to know that. You get what I'm saying? So that's why you got to play everybody a certain way. You feel me? You got to you gotta treat everybody a certain way, you know? Like, not lose that relationship, but still know, like, all right, but I know how I got to treat. I know, I know how I'm going to play our relationship. You feel me? I can, I, can, I can fuck with you right here, but I can't really take you right there because you might do something. That and, and at the end of the day, I'm gonna still be with you, right or wrong. But I still gotta save face. You get what I'm saying? It's my career at the end of the day. How did you become aware of those adjustments that you needed to make, right? Because, like you said, it's not something that's taught to you. Really, just seeing like like people opinions on, on on what you got going on. You get what I'm saying? Like everybody gonna respect it at the end of the day because it's is 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 getting us somewhere. You know, it's not like I'm a struggling rapper trying. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, but like. Like you just had like conversations, really conversations get you to that mindset. Like I right, bet I'm gonna ask you this, and I'm gonna see how you answer it. Or like, or like see, like like I right, bet, boom, I bring you to the. I, I say I right, bet, but what's called gonna be at the studio? We finna, oh, I'm finna rob his ass. Now you know I right, you can't bring him because he gonna try to do something, and I might need this relationship. You get what I'm saying? Not need this relationship, but this relationship might be helpful towards my career. You get what I'm saying? So everybody, like, that's what I mean by you can't bring everybody with you. You know what I'm saying? You got to bring the people that's, that that you know going to have your back and that that you know going to make sure they don't fuck up your face. They don't mess up your face. What is it you hope that Fast Money Ant represents at the end of the day once you reach the highest of highs? I mean, one people to know at the end of the day, I'm as real as it can get, man. That's, I feel like I based my whole career off being real. You know what I'm saying? On sugarcoat nothing, on 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 lab. Well, I ain't gonna say that because I don't want people to. That you feel me? Just in case stuff might happen further on, so <laughs> I I may or may not lie. Who knows? Sometimes it may be a lie. Sometimes it may not be. But I just want people to know I'm as real as it get. You get what I'm saying? Like, and uh, a lot of people be be forgetting what real is. You get what I'm saying? Like. Real not always with the streets. You get even though I've been real in the streets, you get know what I'm saying? But real ain't always like that. You can be real, taking care of your family. You can be real, making sure you if if you a father, handling handling your responsibilities like that. Like it's so much going into being real. You get know what I'm saying? And I want people to know if they need any version of uh, if they need a example of any version of how to be real, they can always look at me and listen to my music. So real quick before we wrap everything up, I do want to touch a little bit more on the music. Again, and before the before a record deal, you say you hear the pain throughout my music, bitch, my soul bleeding. No, oh, yeah, for sure. What's been the toughest topic for you to revisit throughout your music? The toughest things that I've been going through is probably like not being able to celebrate my wins with the people I came in with. You get what I'm saying, like my close friends, because for some reason every time we we get a win, or every time. I get a show or a song, like some all people always getting feel me locked up. You get what I'm saying? I didn't been locked up on on doing some music. You get what I'm saying? Like, at, at, I feel like that's what I've been going through the most. Like, dang, like I can't even. I gotta celebrate this win with you through the phone. Like, I can't even. You know? And I feel like that's probably the toughest thing because these some my my bestest friends. You got all my best friends in jail right now. You know, I don't even want to go outside like that no more. You know, cause all my best best friends, people that I talk to on a daily, or people that I be around, ain't not even here to see this. When you get everything that you wanted, but there's nobody around you to celebrate it with you, it's li- literally the loneliest feeling. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's so, it's only so much like you can do with certain other people in your life. Like me and my OG, I can celebrate a win with my OG for sure. But to an extent, you get what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, that's my OG. It's a lot of stuff that uh that I want to do that that I'm not finna bring my OG around. You get what I'm saying? Or like my I can celebrate a win with my grandma. You get what I'm saying? But at the same time, I gotta respect her as my grandma, not as my homie. You get what I'm saying? Like and and it's it's like my homies is stuff that that we when we was first starting. You get what I'm saying? When we was first starting before I had a song out. Stuff that we planned on doing that we we not even able to do because they in jail. You get what I'm saying? And like I'm able to do it myself, but who want to do it they self? You get what I'm saying? When they don't got nobody to, they don't the people that they didn't dream that and plan that with not even around. It's one of the hardest things because you can't talk to. I mean, you could talk to them when they call you. I can't. 
I can't I can't talk to him when I want to. <laughs> do you carry a guilt with you because you're the one on the outside? Sometimes I do. Cause I be feeling like the music, like this music stuff put a spotlight on us that got its ups and downs. When you really just want it to be ups. This spotlight got got I right, boom. Police know how I'm moving now. I can't even post that I'm finna shoot a video because they gonna be wherever they, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, like, it be it be so weird, but at the same time, none of my homies made me feel that way. Like, I I get on the phone with them, like, like damn, man, my bad, blood. I, I, we should have shot the video somewhere else, or we should have did this somewhere else, or blah, blah, you know, but they be still telling you, like, man, that shit ain't your fault. You know what I'm saying? We, everybody, everybody take accountability for, for whatever they, had or whatever you know what I'm saying, like they they, so but still it still be eating me up like, damn man we gotta find a way where we can still get the business done and not have to deal with shit like this. When you were dealing with your own legal troubles, you got put on house arrest for how long? Like eight months. Eight months, seven to seven curfew. They wanted to give you no movement. That was the original. What they was trying to give me no movement. When I got out the county, but uh, I was doing music and stuff, and I showed them my production contract and stuff like that. So they ended up giving me seven to seven, cause that was like my job. What did you learn about yourself during that time where you basically had to take a backseat? I don't need to be around a lot of people to enjoy my own company. You know, like I I started picking up on a lot of stuff that I probably wouldn't have even had did if I wasn't on house arrest. Like reading, I was. Reading books and uh, became a scholar, bro. I was reading books, all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I started listening to music I probably would never even have listened to. Just doing a whole bunch because that's a lot of you, you feel me. It's just time, but then you on a band. You know, you can't. You looking on social media, your friend, they outside chilling. You can't even do it. You feel me? You you don't, you don't want to wrap your ankle up and 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 risk it. You just gotta sit at the crib and take one out, man. Because seven to seven, who? Everybody pop out at seven o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and you it ain't even you no know, fire. When I was on seven to seven, bro, what was this? Twenty twenty one. When I was on seven to seven, I was going outside around like two, three o'clock, and I was shooting dice from three o'clock to like six thirty, and I go in the crib every day, every day, literally every day. Sometimes I go to the studio. But other than that, I was just trying to get as much money as I can before I go in the crib. Before you had to lock yourself Man, up? Before I had to go in the crib, bro. I think the hard part was that's when COVID was wrapping up. Yeah. So now everybody for real is outside. Outside, bro. Whereas like the pandemic, if it would have happened like 2020. It would have been cool. Everybody was locked up. You know what I mean? I would have been cool. But around that time, COVID was leaving. People was popping out. And I was in the house. Why do you feel like you didn't just lean on music during that time, though? Well, I've been rapping since 2020, but I haven't been rapping since 2020. Like, I haven't been having songs out since 2020 and stuff. You got, I probably only got like 10 songs out to this day, you know? And a lot of other people in their career, they've been rapping seven, eight plus years, and they got 136 songs out. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm I'm thankful and grateful that for and when I first started my career, my first two songs had a, had some success in Chicago. You get what I'm saying? I did a hundred thousand views. I, you get what I'm saying? So, I I really I can't say that it was at a slow point for me, but it's kind of like the it's kind of like the I bet people don't really know, but I've been rapping since 2020. 20, you get what I'm saying? Like people don't know this looking at me, they probably think I just started rapping yesterday, you know. But in my head, I'm like, boom, I got to make something happen, and it wasn't really happening. Get like as big as it is now, so that's probably why I didn't lean on music that much. Cause I'm like, man, I I'm I'm cool, but I'm trying to be up there. You get what I'm saying? I think that's everybody. You feel me? They want to be an overnight success. There's no such thing as an overnight. You still got to put the the work in. You get what I'm saying? But at that time, I'm like, man, I'm trying to drop this song, do a million views, get up with Future, put this collab mixtape out. Do this, do the you get what I'm saying, and and I was it ain't it wasn't working like that. But then I wasn't really seeing like no real, real, real money. You get what I'm saying in in beginning. So I was still outside shooting dice, selling whatever I had to sell. Man, how those connections come together though? Future, Travis, you know those cosigns are huge cosigns. It was fucking with the music. 
You know what I'm saying? You, I feel like, uh, just know, if you doing what you're supposed to do and your music good, you get them, people is hearing it. You get what I'm saying? They might not reach out. It might not be the, at that time in your career where you need them to reach out. But just know somebody is watching. So don't stop. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people, uh, I'll be seeing a picture. It's like a dude digging. You know, and, and, and it's like, the the dude at the bottom, he right close to the thing. He don't see it because he still, you know what I'm saying? But he right close to the, to whatever he, I think it was like some gold or diamonds or whatever it is. He right close to it, but he gave up. And the other dude, he still going, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, don't don't give up because it ain't happened yet because the person that you want to hear your music probably heard your music. You know, he just waiting on the right time. You see a tape happening? For sure, I see a tape coming in the future. One thing about Pluto, he, uh, He's not one of those artists that's like, if he like you, he gonna work with you. You know what I'm saying? He gonna he gonna he gonna rock with you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you feel me? At the end, we all come from the streets, you know. So we all know how it feel to to be to be um looked down on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Look past. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like him and a couple other people they don't they. They try their best to do what they can do. You know what I'm saying? And if they rock with you, they rock with you. Future in Chicago, they got a little tie there. You love Chicago. Chicago love them. Now, the last thing that I do want to mention is that that quitting aspect. You know, like you said, a lot of people, a lot of times, especially as creatives, we fall into this hole of, man, maybe it's not good enough anymore. I've been at it for a little bit. I've been doing this. And it's just not producing what I wanted to. I probably didn't post it on Instagram. I was done rapping probably 10 times, man. But it's always people who uh the fans always encourage me to keep going. It's people in my family encourage me to keep going. Future and them, shout out Zona Man. Zona Man and slid up on one of my posts like, man, hell no. Nah, what are you talking about? Come out here to Miami, man. You need to see something else, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, but as an artist, you you gonna go through those times where it's like, especially, especially like when you got a a lot of stuff to do financially, and you feel like it's not doing what, because that's the only time we want to quit when it's not making sense financially. You get what I'm saying? And early on in your career, it's not gonna make sense financially, you know. And you might have a whole bunch of stuff that you got to do. Like, I damn man, my homies just got they got bonds. We I can't be. Man, I, I'm I, I'm trying to move out, or my OG didn't kick me out. I gotta pay rent, or you feel me? I gotta re. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, man, I'm putting too much time into doing this. I need to be doing something else. When in reality, if you good at what you do, and and you and you got a fan base or a supporters, that means is is you just gotta make it make sense. You gotta see it through. You get what I'm saying? People ain't become billionaires overnight. You know they had. They had stuff that they had to go through. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm not mad at all the stuff that I had to go through because I had to go through it. Was it only the financial aspect that made you want to quit? That, and I ain't like the attention that it brought. Like, um, I mean, the fake friend stuff, it wasn't, it, that, 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 that's some, but at the same time, it's like, you can, you can, you can navigate through that. Like, you know, you, you will know what people here for, you know? That's why you always supposed to keep that same. Cr- I mean, some people that you meet might be as real as other people that you didn't know since you was ten years old. You know, but at the same time, you would be able to tell somebody intentions at a certain point. You know, I feel like it was all the times I wanted to quit. It had to do with like financial stuff, and it had to do with like the the attention that it brought, like po- police wives. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. Even when we wasn't on offense, we'd be on defense. But because police know fast money and is, they gon' they they trying to get them a vacation, you know. So that's them probably the only times I wanted to quit. Like my homies getting booked and financial stuff. So then, at what point do you think it would be enough for you to say, "I've had a good career. I'm happy with where I am in life." No bullshit, bro. When I met Future, and I was able to watch him work and like. Me, him in person and stuff like that. That part, that was my I, I, idea of what I wanted to do. And, and cause at like I, I didn't I never wanted to rap. You get what I'm saying? Like when I had started rapping, I didn't it wasn't like I grew up and wanted to be a rapper. You get what I'm saying? So I 
my my end goal wasn't to win no Grammy or one to do this. You know what I'm saying? My end goal was to be my favorite rappers, you know? And Future was my favorite rapper, Lil Wayne. I ain't met him yet. But you know, that was that was and when I'm when I met him, I was like, man, I can retire today. Like I did uh, you get what I'm saying? I already got a hundred thousand views out the trenches. Two hundred thousand, almost three hundred thousand views out, out the chain. Nobody ever did that from my hood. I'm not from a block where we already have rappers. You get what I'm saying? So I'm the first, you know, to to pay it away. So at, at that time, I was like, man, I did what I just chalk it up, yeah. But now, now I'm like, man, I got my goal. I'm trying to get like like a billion out this. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to I'm trying to get those awards. Get my OG, let her hang it up somewhere. I'm trying, you know, do all that. You've done what you can with what you've been provided with the resources, right? You gave back to the kids at the school. You took your mom on a shopping spree. My every every female in, in my in my family, I took out, like my grandma, my auntie, my OG, my cousin couldn't come. She was she shout out my cousin. She in college. She doing her thing, but she couldn't come. She was taking an exam or something like that. But all the females in my family, I all the women in my family, I took them shopping, Louis Vuitton, bags, shoes, whatever they wanted to get. I went to my old high school, gave away book bags, coast, talked to them. You feel me? Cause I was once in these shoes, you know. Uh, passed out coats to the homeless. Passed out, made sure my people and them were straight. On my block, all type of, you know. Like I said, I base my whole life on being real. You know what I'm saying? And what I think is real, you know. So I I I do everything I can to make sure that's that's still there. I think that as you continue to grow, people are gonna realize that you're as real as it comes. You're genuine and authentic, and I, I fuck with you, bro. I, f- I fuck with the vibe. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. Appreciate it. How important do you feel like that poetry still is in your life, though? Music is poetry. You know what I'm saying? Everything everything in my career is poetry, you know? And I feel like it's, it's, you feel it more when you look at it as poetry and not just as a song with a beat. You know what I'm saying? Because when you look at it as poetry, you every word means something. You know what I'm saying? So it... it, it 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 make you feel for it more rather than just hearing the beat and, and and rhyming. You get what I'm saying? When you're looking at it as poetry, it's like you taking stuff from out your real life. You feel me? Or stuff that you really seen, the stuff that you want to see, and you you putting this as an art. You get what I'm saying? You. What do you feel like's the most important thing you'll express in the future throughout your music? I'm trying to get these. Like I said, I don't really drop a lot of music. You know. I got a lot of, I be dropping a lot of stuff on Instagram for my fans and stuff, but I don't be putting a lot of music out there. So, but now I want to get more consistent with like dropping songs and stuff like that, singles. I'm working on this tape. I'm trying to get out here before the summertime. You know, got some big features on it. Um, really, I'm just trying to be more consistent for the people that support me. We ready for the tape, bro. Trust me, I know I be looking at my comments every day, bro. Every day, you can't go to a fast money and post. And I see at least a hundred people asking for new music. You know what I'm saying? And that's just in my comments. I get probably like two, three hundred comments on in my DMs. Oh my God, bro. Fifty people a day. Bro, drop some music, bro. Drop some. I'll be posting regular. We don't want to see this, bro. Drop some music, bro. We don't, you know, like, so I'm trying to get this out there for sure, man. I'm trying to get this out there. It's gonna be out here for sure. I just dropped a song eight days ago, real before a record deal. Uh I got some some new coming out. Uh, let me see if I can say the feature. Uh, I got some with Huncho coming, for sure. I got some with No Cap coming, real soon, man. Like those the next two songs I'm trying to get y'all. Um, damn, my tape. You got a date for the tape? I would tell you, but <laughs> then they they gonna they gonna see it and get the DM me about the day, and I don't want it to be. Go 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 an extra day and then people get the being mad and you feel me. So I'm just coming soon. Summertime. Summertime. I appreciate you coming, sitting down with us and chopping it up, bro. I appreciate you for having me, bro. You got anything else you want to plug real quick? Free the gas first and foremost. You feel me? Free who matter. Uh long letter kings and queens. Message to the youth, whatever you're doing. You feel me? Whether you wanna do music or whether you wanna 
be a scientist or whether you want to invent something or whether you want to save people's lives, whatever you're doing, it's going to be a time in your life that make you want to be like, man, I'm done doing that. You get what I'm saying? I'm done want to do that. Don't don't listen to that voice. You get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, sometimes the toughest the toughest parts of people's life make that person. You get what I'm saying? So... You can't, you can't give up. You know what I'm saying? You got to see it through. You got to keep going. Now that you said that, what do you feel like is the toughest moment that shaped you? I feel like I had to go through a lot of tough stuff, but I feel like it's still more tough stuff to come because I'm so early in my career. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, trouble with the law can be one of them. You feel me? Uh, being flat broke can be one of them. You feel me? Like, a whole, it's, it's a whole bunch of tough stuff. Things that I had to navigate through and go through, you get what I'm saying? But uh, I'm not mad that I went through it. I'm glad I went through it, and it helped me. It helped make me stronger, you know. It helped make me know more, you know. And I still think I'm still gonna have to go through tough stuff, and I'm I'm not I'm not afraid to face it. In what ways have you navigated all this negativity when all you're trying to look for is positivity? And sometimes it can be hard for you to shut out because it can be so much in your face. You get what I'm saying? Or it could be happening daily or like like you can be dealing with stuff. Some can happen as soon as I leave from here. You get what I'm saying? But at the same time, that's why I say you always got to know what you want your end goal to be. You know, because at the end of the day, whatever you go through, that's going to overpower all of that. You get what I'm saying? Like your end goal going to overpower all because you now you know you got a purpose in life that you want to serve. You get what I'm saying? And, and if you got if you got kids, if you got a friend, you got what I'm saying, like you gotta be able to make sure I bet I gotta go through this stuff, but at the same time I still gotta take care of my little one. So whatever I go through, I still gotta push past it. You get what I'm saying? But for me, I know what I wanna be and I know what I wanna do. I I know I want a billion dollars. You feel me? Two billion one hurt. I know I I want to win awards and give them to my OG. I know I want to, you get what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do. So anything that come that might try to stop that, I just got to jump over that or push past it. Dude, I think that's the perfect place to leave off, bro. Sure. Again, thank you. Thank you, bro. Make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys go ahead, check out Fast Money and Sad Boys for real. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Rick.